Hi, I'm Pastor Brady. And I'm Deaconess Marissa. And welcome back to another episode of PND Theater. Today's devotion comes from the parable of the hidden treasure. And what's PND Theater without a little, well, theater? So sit back, relax, and grab a snack, and get ready for the parable of the hidden treasure. Yar! The kingdom of heaven be like a treasure, a buried treasure, on a deserted island. Ooh, with like cake and ice cream? Nar, nar less. Not cake and ice cream. A deserted, like no one be there. Yar, where was I? Oh yes. Then a pirate comes along, and he searches high, and he searches low, and he searches everywhere, and finally, X marks the spot. Then, after digging, and digging, and digging, Yarg the treasure be his, and he steals it! Aye, and he lives happily ever after. Hold on there, buccaneer, that's not how that parable goes. Well, lassie, if you think you're so smart, why don't you tell it? Okay, I will. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field. Aye, that be a baseball field. There's a tractor on the infield in the background. Eh, close enough. Like I was saying, the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field, which a man finds. And when he finds the treasure, he covers it up. Then in his joy, he goes and sells all he has. And after he sells everything, he goes and buys the field, and with it, the treasure. Okay, okay, so your interpretation of the parable is correct, but what does that mean for me? What am I supposed to do? Am I supposed to sell everything I have for the treasure? And what even is the treasure? Is the treasure the kingdom of heaven? Well, that is one way that many people interpret that parable, but it's not the only way, and there are even some problems with that interpretation. What's wrong with that interpretation? Well, in that telling of the parable, we put ourselves in the shoes of the man walking through the field, or in the boots of the pirate. So, when we find the treasure, which in that interpretation we have established is the kingdom of heaven, then it's up to us to purchase the treasure. Okay, but I'm still not really seeing a problem here. The problem is, we can't earn heaven. The truth is, none of us would sell everything we have for heaven, and even if we did, it wouldn't be enough. We need to look at the parable another way, so let's tell it one more time. This time, Jesus will represent the man in the field, and we will represent the treasure. Jesus finds us, his treasure, in the field. And this treasure isn't one that any of us would like to have. Instead of a treasure of gold and fine jewels, we look more like a treasure of trash, by the way we act sometimes. And he buys us not with gold or silver, but with his holy, precious blood and innocent suffering and death. But even despite our sinful nature, Jesus sees us and has to have us. With this understanding, we see the value that God places on us. In Christ, we have value. And because Christ died on the cross for our sins, well, we're no longer a treasure of trash. Instead, we've been redeemed, and now we shine like a treasure with all the glory of heaven. Will, Will you pray, pray with us? us? God, we thank you for seeing us as your treasure and giving us true value through your Son. Amen.